Well, the UAW strike now approaching uh, uh, three full weeks, and it should be noted that the number of days that have been lost, work days, uh, because of labor disputes right now this year, the highest overall since 20, since 2000. Although we haven't seen, I can't recall, you know, seeing anything in the news or reading about people who are crossing the picket lines. Uh, we know, of course, that that happens uh, the, the, when strikers are out there. It was once thought like the most reprehensible thing you could do. The worst people possible, the most offensive people were those who crossed the picket line. So this weekend I actually learned something, uh, just how much people actually hated those folks who crossed the picket line, otherwise known as scabs. First of all, the word comes from a 1915 poem, Ode to a Scab. It's by Jack London. You know Jack London. He was born in deep poverty. He went on to write several masterpieces. He had Call of the Wild, White Fang. Here's a little bit of irony to it. that He became one of the wealthiest folks out there, right? But he never lost track, never lost touch of, of hardworking people, the little man or woman, so to speak, and especially uh, how we as human beings use our natural survival instincts to overcome things. So in this ode, he wrote, After God finished with the rattlesnake, the toad, and the vampire, he had some awful substance left with which he made the scab. <laughs> so <laughs> that's pretty rough stuff, right? Uh, but I can understand, listen, someone, I, I really, and listen, I could, particularly in the Depression era, I can understand why someone would cross a picket line. Uh, with that in mind, uh, we need to find different folks, I think, these days, because that's a tough definition, scabs. And it's so interesting that this SBF trial is beginning today, uh, because I've got an idea. Maybe the people that have been ripping off the American public via these outrageously priced IPOs and all of these scamsters out there like the Sam Bankman Freeds of the world, and they raise all this money for these companies at extreme low valuations, they raise the money down here, right? Then they spend a fortune on marketing because they want you to get to know these companies. If they keep marketing it, keep marketing it, it will seep into your brain. Why is that important? Well, remember, one of the first investing rules that almost everyone knows of is invest in what you know. Right? It's a line from Peter Lynch. It's part of the Peter Lynch principle uh, of buying things that you know or maybe that you've heard of, right? Well, I heard of Peloton. Well, I heard of this. And then, of course, these become unmitigated disasters. I get another example for you today. Smile Direct, they filed for bankruptcy. The company was growing really, really fast. They more than doubled their revenue in 2018 to $423 million, but they also doubled their losses. They lost $75 million. Didn't matter. Went public the next year, almost a $9 billion valuation. Remember, this is on a $75 million loss. They raised $1.3 billion. Uh, of course, that was the advertising, right? A lot of that goes to advertising. Well, this morning, the stock is down 62% to 15 cents a share. By the way, Jack London's poem ends with this. Where others have hearts, he carries a tumor of rotten principles. Those folks who keep foisting these severely overpriced new offerings on us certainly have rotten principles. I don't care what anybody says. Listen, I'm a capitalist, I'm a businessman, and I believe in Wall Street, but what's happened over the last 15 to 20 years, particularly out of Silicon Valley, is crushing the average American who just wants an opportunity. These are the people that Jack London wrote about and championed, and I do too, Liz.